I'm shocked to hear this, man. Do you know that in in police quarters, yeah. right? There is no budget to even cut grass. So who pays for this? The head of the balai from his own allocation, his own pocket money, is to do this. So the 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 system is created in such a way, or it's not fixed for 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 things to function. So if they don't have enough. Now I'm not talking about those who are corrupt and greedy. Okay, okay. We're talking about the clean one, lah. I'm talking about the basic things. Yeah. They have to go and find money to do it. That's terrible. Okay. Oh my lord! No okay. wonder so many roadblocks, so many like, no and then people are in car. Yeah. I, I'm not give, making excuse, but I'm telling you the system is broken. Welcome back to Yamcha Sessions. Today we have wait, are you? I forgot to ask you before the podcast. How do I address you? Uh? Just Hannah. Just Hannah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I didn't have to ask you. Better be careful. We have given. You. We can Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> we have given the sword. You know. Okay. So Hannah. Today we have Hannah. Yo. Um. As you all know, this is Andrew. This boy. Gay. So I think everybody already knows this. Thank you so much for spending time on your weekend today with us. We really do appreciate it, especially since you're changing the changing the country. <laughs> Taking time out of your day. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thanks we for we really me. do appreciate yep. it. We really do. Yep. Okay. So um before we start, I there are few I mean we we have a few questions now. Okay. So before we start, let's talk about your childhood and uh who are your parents, any siblings and all that. Mm. Yeah. I grew up in Subang Jaya. Okay. Um we moved from OUG. Why you move away from whoa, OUG? Whoa, 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 OUG is whoa. the best neighborhood. I'm sorry to cut you off right now. <laughs> okay. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> We should. Oak Lang Road, you know, this this, no, this, no. this neighborhood. Yeah. We know we know all too well. We know all too well. It's okay, <laughs> just continue. I'm just so disappointed in life right now. No, but you know, once you once you experience Subang Jaya, you hardly people hardly move out of Subang Jaya. It's, I mean sure. true, true. That's, yeah. that's a that's an active stereotype actually, right? That people who Yeah, because it's it's self sufficient, you know, like they, they have everything mm, in Subang yeah, Jaya. They do. That's right. They that's do, right. they do. Yeah. So I grew up I mean my childhood, I um I was born in KL. Okay. Back then it's the famous Sentosa Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people my generation, they were all born in Sentosa oh, Hospital. Okay. And my grandmother lived in a um, wooden house in Oakland Road. I think they call it Kampung Chetty last time. Wow. Chetty. Yeah. Very, very familiar. They call it Chetty Kampung. But now it's next to the river, but now it's gone. Okay. okay. Uh, so um, when I was about four years old, kindergarten, my parents moved to Subang Jaya. I and see. since then, I, I've been in Subang. I see. Uh, so my kindergarten, high school, Everything? Like? Everything is in Subang, okay. including college. And your yeah. parents also... Uh, w- my mom is a housewife. My okay. father is a businessman. So he has his own printing, small oh, okay. printing company. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we're not we're not well-to-do. I think we're just comfortable. As, as in, we have food and drinks. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, sure. we can Enough. afford that. That, that, that I, I think to that for that, I'm very, very thankful. Uh. Yeah. So I had a very good um, childhood. Growing Subang's up in a good Subang. place also lah. Yes, <laughs> very multiracial. Yes. Uh, so I have a very balanced, I think, viewpoint of what Malaysia ought mm. to be and what Malaysia was back then. Uh, this is something I want to improve. For sure. Yeah, I feel that things have changed now compared to when I was in school. Yeah, for, back. For I think now it's like more racial uh, and see. there's less integration. I feel. Okay. Back then, uh, you know, my my best friend um, is a Malay girl in in school. Oh, okay. I remember just. Learning, I mean, playing masa masa on her, on her parents' car and <laughs> going to hang out in the Shah Alam library. Back right. then, got no big big malls like today. Yeah, sure, sure. That's uh, true. You know, so after SPA, after uh, no after PMR, I think we hang, we were in Subang Parade. Oh you my know, god! They, they, those were the play, uh, the yeah, longest yeah. shopping mall in South <laughs> yeah, Asia. Yeah, 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 sure. Subang Parade. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So that's that was my childhood. Okay, okay. So I know. Uh, I, I did my homework a bit lah. I okay. mean, I, some would call it stalking, but I call it homework. But okay. I watched a few podcasts with you on, and I know you were like hit prefect expectations. So yeah. I think if people want to know more about, more about you in that term, I think they can go to that podcast because we're gonna save that, right? Yes, might correct, well, correct. Might as well. So I know uh, you also. This is on your Wikipedia page as well. So <laughs> I don't know whether it's true. <laughs> it was your friend who uh, somewhat told you or got you interested into politics, right? In yep. t- into joining DAP in the beginning. Yep. So, I, yeah. I, I think it was not because I was interested in politics, mm-hmm. but I felt very compelled. <coughs> okay. So I didn't pursue it because it was my passion. I felt it was my responsibility and that's the basic minimum yeah. required of um, a Malaysian citizen to register to vote. 
For sure. And if I'm interested to support a friend, at the time it was Edward Ling, yeah, right? Yeah, it was yeah. Edward Ling. Yeah. To join a political party together with him. Uh, so that was what I did uh, in 2007. I see, I see. So you didn't really exactly have like a love for politics. It's more of like you felt like you were compelled in terms of res- like a responsibility to give back. To register, to register, to vote and to go out and vote. I, I felt very mm. passionate about fighting corruption. Uh, right. Simply because I remember, I think the news that really got me very agitated mm. was back then there was a state exco and also a councillor in Slango. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he was involved in uh, corruption allegation. I think he had like a big place, big bungalow. Or uh-huh. I, I can't remember his name now, but I remember reading that and people were very angry. And then he had an open house where they gave out free food. And he said, wow. because there was a crowd at my open house, therefore I still have the support of people. And I felt that was such a wrong thing to say For because sure. Malaysian, they love open house concept. But <laughs> having a large crowd at your open house does not mean support. For sure. Uh, it means free mean, food. <laughs> correct. That's not mean people endorse whatever you're doing. So I felt that was such, that, that's really a wrong perception uh, that needs to be fixed. Yeah. 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 Mm. Damn. Okay, so that was one of the main reasons why you felt like you entered the politics. Yeah. And f- how was the experience like when you first entered as uh, a, a newbie, I think, in the politics scene? <laughs> 2008. <laughs> 2008. Yes. 2008. Yes. How, was the, how was the experience like? Yeah, w- Because the minister as per today and the minister last time was different. Yeah. So I, I somehow feel the experience last time is much more dirty because it's so much under. Really? I feel like oh. last time it's just... Because I wasn't into it. I just felt like so many things going on with corruptions and with yeah. money stumbling. How were, how you as a pure newbie, you know, when you enter it, how do you fail, you know? When Ew, I sorry. and when I entered politics at that time, it was mm. two thousand seven. And back then, uh, Patla had a landslide majority after taking over from Mahade. Mm, yeah. People felt, oh, Patla is a fresh uh, you know, a fresh air. Fresh space. Yeah, face, and, sorry. Yeah, yeah, and um, no baggage of mm. tune. Uh, and so people people embraced him. That's why he got such a big landslide majority. Now, when I entered that space, it was a time where there was still a lot of fear about changing government because it had not happened before. Yeah. Right. And a lot of young people felt, you know, I want to give up on this country and, and, and leave. <laughs> that, why, why do you enter politics? Yeah. And at that time, there was no media social. It was still just blocks. Yeah, like yeah, SMS, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. no WhatsApp. It's kind of, it was tough. It was yeah, tough. It was a very controlled space. And if you're not in the news, then you cannot get your message mm-hmm. out. Yeah. So for me, it was a mixed uh, kind of experience for me because I grew up not interested in politics. My father subscribed to Star. So I grew up <laughs> reading the Star. Yeah, yeah. And if you read the Star, you would fear pass. Yeah. Right? It's cute, lah. It's always somewhat like. Yeah. And so, so at that time when they were talking about, you know, we don't have an opposition coalition at that point. Yes. Mm. Everybody running on their own ticket. And there, was, there were talks about working together with PASS back then. Right. And I remember scrambling at every single press conference and event, making sure there's no PASS logo behind me. Because Pakatan Royat was not launched yet at that yeah. time. It was only after we won in 2008 that we formed the government together in Slango, in Penang, mm. five states. Yes. right? And then Pakatan Royat came yeah. about after 2008. So moving forward now, 2021, 13 years later, I can tell you that the space today is def- definitely uh, better. There is more openness. People, people definitely discuss more. Yeah. Compared to uh, us. Young yeah. people talk about politics a lot more. Yeah. Even though the outcome is the same, that means people are still feeling disillusioned. People are still migrating. Yep. But I feel that the way of doing politics have changed. You, you, don't long, you no longer rely on traditional media you have your own platform now to tell your story. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But what I, I know this is kind of sidetracked a little bit, but don't you feel that even though today it's a little bit, it's, it's a lot more open, like you mentioned, do you still feel like the media kind of like skews the okay. certain, like, I don't know whether, did, did you, did you uh, listen to the Dr. Mahate chopsticks thing? Bro, <laughs> I'm Chinese. <laughs> did you listen to that video? It was no. on Awani. No, I did not. It was something about this uh, assumption that he said that, only Chinese people use chopsticks and Chinese people refuse to use anything else. Something like that. And I was like, hi, this man. It wasn't, it wasn't that. I think the whole narrative was that um, allegedly, Dr. Mahate said, um, everybody should use their hands. Yeah, yeah, something like that. To promote sort of this uni- unity, unity amid, amongst Malaysians because yeah. that's... Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. even go into the news. I know that it was taken from his book. 
Uh, but mm. I didn't. I didn't read those statements. I didn't go into it simply yeah. because I just came out of a Tudong. Uh, oh, I yeah. Tudong oh, news, oh and, I, and until today, I'm still reading articles, open letters about the Tudong incident. So, yeah. for me, it was already too much. Uh, yeah. yeah. In in that in my headspace and with budget sitting and all that, so I didn't go into the chops. Even though everybody say, "Oh, why don't you say something?" Why don't I feel that uh, there's a lot being so said already. Uh, I don't need to add on to, yeah, to sure. it. Yeah. Talking about a total incident, right? I had no issue. In fact, I thought you were. I thought you were very brave doing it, and I knew people were going to have backlash when I saw the picture. Actually, isn't it mandatory if you go into a mosque that you have to cover up? It is. Right. Uh, like but even I covered up. I went to a mosque before. Yeah, but I I feel that there's a lot of people who. Because they have not been there, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they didn't know that. Oh, uh, and also, uh, people make an issue out of <coughs> the. They say if it's a selendang is okay, but if it's a tudung or a hijab, <sighs> it's wrong. Oh. But you know, the fact is, I was wearing a selendang. It's just that people are not used to seeing a tight selendang. So yeah, 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 a selendang, yeah. if you let it loose, you will see some hair. Yeah, yeah. And that apparently is not rigid or is not as extreme. As making sure that it's nightly, yeah, it's neatly, uh, it neatly <laughs> tight. Yeah, yeah, so what yeah. I did was I just put a pin here to make sure because I don't like it falling halfway. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I just like things to be neat, and yes. so that's exactly what I did. So it's a selendang, yeah. <sighs> it's selendang, guys. <laughs> it's selendang. What you're doing? Sometimes I feel like people just want to shoot because they can shoot. Because you feel, but pre- I'm perfectly okay mm. because I feel that in. We in a place where you want to fix something that is broken. It needs to. You need to know. You are going to upset some people. Oh. Because that's not how they want. Some people might not even want the issue to be fixed. Some people like to living in their own bubble. Yeah, to right. continue with. Yeah, and and they don't like the integration. For example, so I I I think wh- when. This is something that politics have really um, done to me mm. personally as a person. It has changed the way I behave and react to people. So today I no longer seek to get approval of yeah, people. Yeah, for, sure, for sure. Because it's impossible. Yeah. You will you never get everybody happy. You can't make everybody, everybody happy. You can't yeah. make everybody happy. Yeah. So yeah. you learn to be at peace with what you do and, and, and the response. For sure. Yeah. For how, sure. How much time did it take you to get to that state? The 13 years. <laughs> you know, I tell you, when in, in my first term, I remember in my 20s, I entered at the age of 20. Uh, I, I contested at the age of 29, right? right? And I won. But I remember being very upset. Like It would eat me up if yeah. I read emails you. that say, I'm not going to vote for you anymore. Sure. And I, I felt like I'm not going to vote for you anymore. It's, it's like a judgment on me and my mm. capability or my, yeah. my uh, on me as a person. So... Today, not to say I'm immune or I don't care, but right. I really feel that I have to accept after looking at three different elections, I've contested in three elections, and no matter how bad my opponent is, they always have hardcore support. So that 12,000 votes will always be there. Right. right? And it doesn't matter how hard I work, I will never change and convert the 12,000 voters. Yep. And because of that, if you get an email or a few emails saying, I'm not going to vote for you anymore, mm-hmm. it is okay. That is democracy. So I've learned to accept that. I so see. the moment I accepted that, I just do my best. I don't try to make everybody yeah, for a sure. supporter. For yeah, sure. for sure. I think I think a lot of people go through that actually throughout their careers and lives. It's yeah, like you, yeah. you receive criticism in the beginning. Yeah. Then you feel like it's the end of the world because that criticism means so much. Yeah. But actually, I think you... We kind of grow past that and then you take it. I mean, it can be good, it can be bad, but you understand that it comes from different places. I also feel it's an age thing, you know? Oh, is it? And you know, when, <laughs> when you're young, you are not so sure about yourself. Oh, true, right, true. There's right. an uncertainty. Correct. So yeah. I'm not sure whether your criticism of me is valid or not. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you are valid, then hey, I need to change. But right. as you grow older, you become more confident of Who your own want? ability yeah. and, and yeah. weakness. So then you, you become okay. If you know that this is a weakness... And I cannot change it, so right. I live with it, lah. Yeah, it's true. It. Yeah, it's true. I'm I ayat right there, bro. You know, yeah. live with it. You know, talking about y- the journey of politics and everything, right? I just got to go straight to the point, lah. Since mm. I'm there, you know, what do you feel about the Sheraton event? <sighs> Sheraton, you know, one one person spoke to me when we were still in Putrajaya yeah. and said there is some kind of movement we hear, uh, trying to remove you from power and it's going to come from within. Betrayal. Wow. Bro, that's yeah. some Game of Thrones stuff going on. Game yeah, of Thrones. When, when I first re- heard it, I thought this is quite out of the world. It's quite impossible because we had such a strong majority at the time. Yeah. But when it happened, then you realise that, 
oh, if only I had paid attention, but then there was nothing I could do even at that time. Because right. if it's going to be a betrayal, it's not something that you can expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody's going to check on their own teammate expecting them to walk out on you. Yeah, man. Especially after such Actually, a grand yeah. victory. Yeah. So if it's a pengkhianatan, a, a betrayal, yeah. there's no way you could have stopped it. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's how I, I felt. But so when it happened, we have different groups. We have different WhatsApp groups. So I understand there's a minister's group. Mm. There's a deputy minister's group. So I'm in the deputy minister's group. And we are quite close. So we will eat once a month together and, and okay. share. Then when this happened, we have also have a member of parliament group. Okay. And then I saw some people leaving the group. Oh, like, oh no. Like instantly. That's when you know, they man. And then I felt, okay, something is happening here. They suddenly just left. And these were the, the ones from Amno who left Amno to join Bersatu. I see. Uh, I <sighs> remember seeing Ronald Candy leaving, Mas Emeyati, and they just left the group. And then the deputy minister's group also, some left. And then you start looking around and you will have some close buddies. And you want to make sure that your close buddies, hey, we're still in the same camp. Don't betray me. Don't walk out on me. Yeah. You know? So it was really a time of guessing and identifying. Are you still with me or have you left? Uh, so that was the time. And also we were then signing SD because Tun then claimed that he still had the majority mm. and we all gathered while Muyidin was being sworn in. Mm. So everybody was you know, counting because the number is so slim. The majority yeah. is so slim. Yeah. And then <sighs> only after that, when we went into a lockdown in March, only then it settled in. You know, like then this yeah. happened. Because when you're at, at that, right? It's, every, it's chaos. Every day is unfolding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Right, I see. Oh, I don't know, man. Sounds I, felt, really I felt so sad, man. Feels like those Julius Caesar stuff going on right here, bro. <laughs> That's exactly Personally, I felt really, really disappointed. I felt so sad. Yeah. I, when, yeah. when you guys were the, the new government, I don't know why I went to office that day. Feeling happy. Wow, the sun was so bright. Yeah. You know, the air was so crisp. Mm. But when I found out about the news, right, of the Sheraton event, I don't know why I felt... I, I, I t a bit of context, right? I actually don't really know much about politics yep. prior to all this podcast, everything. I don't know how I got here, like, to be honest. But I think at that time, I felt so sad. Like my heart dropped. Mm. It's, it was a very tough time, like, I feel. And then I, I think since then, it's just living each day, like you're hoping for the best only. Yeah. yeah. But can I tell you how I feel now? Mm. I mean, uh, after Muyidin's government and now Ismail Sabri, yeah. I, I, I look at it and I, I do feel that it is a waste that we, we should have been there. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to have that kind of pride within the opposition or within us. That is us true. That is true. To mm. think that only us can change this nation. Yeah. And so, I, I feel that you need a balance of, I want it to, I want to go back and I want to make these changes. But at the same time, I don't want to feel like only us can. Because if we think like that, then it's we're never going to change. Right, yeah. 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 And, and so, That's true. And, and so it's not about us getting power back, but really about how can we now, even as opposition, contribute to make this nation better. That's true, that's true. Yeah. Me, yeah, actually, I never thought about it that way. A lot yeah. of people talk about red state, blue, blue state in the US. But actually, if you think about it, why, why is that a divide? How come people just don't work together, right? Where does the divide come from? You know, that, that thing. Yeah. It's so different to have that mentality, that mindset to feel that why not together? We just work together. Yeah, so of, you know? of course with power, you can do a lot more. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even without power, I really believe that ordinary Malaysians, we all can play our part to For change sure. this this nation. We do yeah. our part. You know, talking about contribution, right? I always see Said Sadis, uh, Said Sadis, uh, yeah, Said Sadis Instagram about him working together with you. Uh, like <laughs> but it Thursday and stuff like that. I always see them like okay, cool, cool. Did you watch the TikTok a lot yeah, of times? I time? watch the TikTok like wow, what bate, 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 bate. I'm like it's okay, quite okay, cute. It's quite, cute. <laughs> quite funny yeah. like, you know. So I'm like I can see that you guys are really working very close. And uh, we had a podcast with Sai Sade. He did mention some of the things that he's potentially going to do. So I'm thinking right now for the audience, right? So right now, in you guys are really working close together. So what are the plans, right, for Malaysians in general? It's a very vague question, no? Yeah, I think for Muda and the DAP, if yeah. you look at our party and, and what we stand for, mm. DAP, Muda, Warisan, PKR, we all believe that the future of Malaysia needs to be a multiracial Malaysia and a moderate nation. Yeah. Mm. We all accept that. That, that. that is our baseline. Okay, And so for us, it is to ensure that we do not become too extreme. And, and not ra do not become racial and, and the yeah. kind of politics we want to engage in must be um, 
it must be somewhat together constructive yeah. and it must it must build and you know and, and inclusive yeah yeah so that's what we are working on uh, all of us and mm. now making sure that uh, now if you look at undi 18 young people can vote but if you look at the pattern in Melaka everybody talk about the pattern in Melaka <laughs> young people are favoring Perikata National and and that's why that's something that we cannot assume and take lightly that right. just because they are young they're going to rebel against the government and they're going to stand with outside of opposition I don't think it's true yeah, yeah. and I think it was uh, some kind of interview I saw I'm not sure whether it's World of Buzz or says mm. they interview college students and they ask them about all the political logo like do you recognize them and a lot of people don't know the political logo so it shows that actually people are not very concerned about politics still especially the younger generation and we have a role to to to, to play yeah. i i was only politically conscious and uh in when i was 29 that's true so yeah. that's 10 years after i turned 18 you know yeah yeah i was only politically constrained last year <laughs> <laughs> I think I am still not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think COVID kind of pushed people to know more, for sure. Because first of all, I think you're at home. Definitely, so the views yeah, that we did during lockdown is a lot higher. Yeah, and then people want to know more because they're they're, they're at home right now. Yeah. And they were, and since the government is also ever changing, everything is ever changing actually. So you don't even know the news. You know you don't know when the PM is going to make an announcement. You're mm-hmm. more tuned, lah. I feel. Yeah. I think a lot more people yeah. are yeah. more tuned yeah. right now. Yeah. Actually, you you. Your response to that question was you wanted to build a more uh, moderate Malaysia, a more inclusive one, especially from a racial dynamic. Yeah. Would you not argue that um, if I put myself in the shoes of the current government today, I would argue that that's what I'm, I'm, I'm doing right now. Of course, but then if you look at the base, the platform, I'm no believes in only you know championing the rights of the Malay. Right. Um, and they rely on MCA to do the same for Chinese and MIC to do the same for Indian. Indian. But I. I think that you know every time a politician stands stands up and addresses the nation in your speech, you should be speaking for all Malaysians and not yeah. just particular race. Yeah, so that's why your slogan must match your party constitution. <laughs> your slogan <laughs> as a prime minister must right. match also the things you have done before. Like sure. if you otherwise not tally right, yeah, then yeah, kind you of weird. Just Google Ismail <coughs> Sabri Wikipedia yeah. and read about the controversies. Mm. A lot of it are all racial. I see. Yeah. I see. Still don't understand how he yeah. became power, lah. I guess. I guess the struggle is that he is he is uh, ultimately favoring the majority race in this country, and the way a democracy works is you get majority vote. I, I, mean. I, I don't condemn his slogan. I uh. I feel that every prime minister, the moment they become prime minister, they realize that their um, survival as a prime minister right. is dependent on all races. And so they suddenly feel that I need to be moderate. I need to address the nation. So it's one Malaysia, it's Kluaga. you know, uh, yeah. Inish, uh, yeah. Now Keluarga Malaysia. Yeah. So that mm. slogan is good, but only when there's hypocrisy, it becomes yes, uh, very. Uh, it it looks worse. Yeah, people criticize it when there's right. hypocrisy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not condemning his slogan. I think it's good if he's really, really a change man. For sure. And he believes in okay, this is the big family. We should support him in that because. Mm. You know, this is what we want. Uh, everybody behaving like you know, this is We're a big together, family. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, yeah, I gotta ask. It's <laughs> gonna be a very funny question. But for example, by miracle, okay, you become the prime minister, right? What would be your slogan be? Like, ane tapau satu. So you got Malay, <laughs> Chinese, and <laughs> Malay in your slogan. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be something like that, huh? Just, just hindsight, lah. You know, you just thought of the joke. I'm I just sure thought of the, the joke, joke, like, bro. I was thinking, like, slogan, slogan. Ane tapau satu, bro. That's like one Malaysia stuff going on. Because right there. all different languages I in think one. You're gonna be ousted in two days, bro. <laughs> yeah, so. See, that's why I'm not. I'm not in politics, man. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna. Okay, so I have actually a, f- uh, a follower, a friend, a supporter of the podcast. Is it Rebecca? Yeah, Bro. don't la, ayo, <laughs> my god. I actually there are a lot of Rebecca's out there lah. Yeah, so she's from Sengga- she's from Segambut. Oh. Yeah, uh, she she actually had a lot of questions, and I was like, eh, hey, I think hard lah to fit all your questions. So sh- this is a question for from her. Mm-hmm. She was like, in your opinion, uh, how are the dynamics of being MP in a federal territory different to other states like Slango? Oh, definitely very different. I mean, I spent first two terms in Slango mm. as a state assemblyman at the state level. And so, even at the state level, you had to handle state issues plus local issues. So, not just slango, but you have to handle MPSJ issues. Now, in Kuala Lumpur mm. Federal Territory, there's no state assemblyman. There's no adun. So, uh, we have three levels of government, right? Local, yeah. that is your DBKL, MBPJ, MPSJ. Mm. 
then you have state government, yeah. then you have federal. Yes. Yep. In Kuala Lumpur, federal territory, <laughs> you do not have these two level. You just you are this. So you have to this <laughs> level tap out everything. Oh, so you have to I do see. everything. That's why a lot of people say, heavy, uh? "Hey, uh, you, why are you looking at traffic lights? Why are you looking at flood? Why are you looking at you know like uh, potholes or trees? Yeah, yeah. Like because why do I post is, about trees? Yeah." But in Kuala Lumpur, there's only one ballot paper. That's something people don't understand. In Slango, if you vote a uh, voter in Slango, you get two ballot paper. You vote for your adun, oh. state assemblyman. You vote for your member of parliament. I see. In Kuala Lumpur, they are that. only given one ballot paper. Okay. Oh yeah, no wonder. Oh, I yeah, didn't, they, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about this. So, yeah. Well, then so, again, we're not from Slango. Yeah, so that's why when people <laughs> condemn and say, "Oh, you know, I I don't expect you to be doing this." You know, but I have no choice in Kuala Lumpur. It I is don't your responsibility. Have, I, don't, your I don't have anyone else because they only recognize one person because they voted for one. Yeah. So the difference in, if you are a member of parliament in Slango, you don't have to deal with this because you have state assemblymen. Yes, you have, MBC, you have all these. And under, you have councillors yeah. to help you. Mm. And that's why, that, that is the difference, I think, in, in, in other places, you have MPs who have the luxury not to do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But not us in KL. Wow, I didn't know that. That... <laughs> so stressful, man. Oh my god. Yeah, all yeah. of us here KL boys, so we know nothing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think only one fellow here from Slango over there. <laughs> so I think MPs in other states they can really, you know, just focus on policy yeah. issues, but right. not us in KL. Wow, I did not know that. Don't you think it's so sad how we don't know that? <laughs> yeah. Like if you think about it, right? Imagine okay, so I'm not saying like I'm super politically savvy, la, right? But I'm pretty sure that a lot of people out there aren't. I yeah. think the education system is so sad they don't teach you all this. Oh, exactly. They, they that, that just remove Pandidikan Sani from don't remove Form 1, Pandidikan Form 5 or remove something. Remove Pandidikan Moral, bro. Pandidikan Moral is ridiculous. And then put Pandidikan Politik. I think that would be better. Yeah, I think people should have a, a at least a brief understanding of how government <laughs> works, right? You know? Especially now with Undi 18 being kicked in. Yeah. You definitely need to prepare them. When they turn 18, they should know all yeah, this. I expect we better yeah. know. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Otherwise, they're making in uninformed decisions. Kemahiran Hidup should have this. Yeah. Hey, yeah, oh. If they still have Kamai Hiran, do they have? I'm not sure. No, I mean, it's, it's been 10 years since I've been in school. Yeah. So. Last I've checked, I saw my cousin who just graduated did that. You know that? The, the, wooden, the wooden thing. Uh. So it's still there. Okay. Yeah. That's all I learned from Kamai Hindu, by the way. And Wantan yeah. Mi. Yeah, I remember Wantan Mi. Sorry, what? <laughs> do you remember Kamai Hiran Hindu? One of the chapters you they teach you how to make Wantan, wantan mi. mi. No kidding. Yeah. That is what one time. Wait, is that okay? I don't want to be sexist, but I thought I thought cooking for girls would work for guys. That's why I didn't learn it. No, no, no. I remember friends doing is it. Yeah. Huh. My hand, he do. Did we? We are in the same class, dude. No, we, no, I, we just I, I just didn't something. I just it? didn't yeah. read the textbook, but I know there was some cooking involved, which I didn't do so, you know. Oh, oh. Yeah. No, no, like our school wasn't that great. La. I mean, sorry. <laughs> sorry. We, sk- we skip class or something. I you know? never skip class. I just oh. want to put that out there. Oh, I never oh, skip class. Oh, 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 oh. I never put thing. Okay, um talking about education, right? Wait, did you ask this question already? Huh? Oh, okay. No, no. T- uh, talking about, speaking of education, right? We know that you and Syke uh, did law. Oh, and, yeah. And you did law in Australia, right? Yep. Yeah. So, I know it seems very daunting to a lot of people, right? Because it feels as if, maybe it's just to me, when you enter into politics, it feels like you need to know a lot about law before you get into it. But do you feel so? No. I, I feel that a majority of our time is not spent on law, but mm. really about listening to different issues and finding the right agencies to deal with them. So it's a lot of processes, applications, not so much of lawmaking. Lawmaking is only, you know, the bills, whether you pass it or not in parliament. And that's three times a year. But the bulk of our time, yeah. yes, definitely it helps uh, yeah. to understand how laws are being made and, and the rationale behind certain laws. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the pros and cons. I, I think so that's what law school taught us, la, how to critically think and answer to a res- respond to an issue. You know what I find super amazing about you inside as well? Uh, you, you guys' background in politics, right? I mean, politics, politics, but in law, right? Law. The way you guys structure your sentences and the way you guys structure your points are uh, so organized. So when you, you have like preface, then you have meet and then you end and then people get it. So I think that really helps when you're in politics and then you, it helps with your speaking as well. I really like admire that. I was having a conversation with Andrew of this over dinner, that's why. Just wanted to point it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think one thing I've learned watching Sadiq and his materials online, yeah. He always unwraps um, difficult issues and put it into TikTok materials. That means oh, yeah, man. the he, content he, is so he digests it for you. Yeah, He'll yeah, give yeah. you three points. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's so well done. I feel. Yeah. I wish I had that. 
that and, form of conciseness. And that's something we learn in church because oh, is it? church has a lot of messages and sermons yeah. and today people don't spend many hours in church. So they have like 30 minutes and the sermon, the preacher will always say, three points today. And oh, so that's how I think I from oh, oh. We, we, I, I learned that, uh, you know, to always keep it simple for people. Oh. It's called kiss, right? Keep yeah. it short and simple, yes, man. Yes, oh, I know a more vulgar version, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's called okay, okay. Um, I don't. I feel like I'm asking all the questions. I feel kind of bad. Like I ninja some also. Okay, okay, you ninja some also. Okay, okay, okay. So, right. oh, oh no, please, 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 please. Okay. <laughs> so I know you did law and everything, but when you went into politics, how did your parents feel about it? Because if I'm not mistaken, at that time, right, there was a internal security act allowing arrest without trial. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure any parent would be really worried about their kid going to politics. But how did they? How did your parents feel? So in March 2008, mm. it was uh, a lot happening in this country. But personally, for my family uh, and my husband's family, uh, we we just had this union in January where we just got married. Mm. But in our in our love story, my husband and I we didn't date, and so I, I take you I backward oh, to sure. 2007, uh -huh. six months before we got married in January 2008. We got engaged, but it was not through a normal dating. So in 2007, I received a word of prophecy from a pastor saying that, you know, six months in, in, in June 2007, uh -huh. you will receive a proposal. And this is the man that God has prepared for you. So that was a, the, the, the word given to me. I wrote it down in my mm -hmm. Bible. Mm. I shared it with my, my close cousin, but I left it. I didn't pursue it, nothing. Okay. And for me, if the prophecy comes true, then it's true. Yeah. Sure. But if not, then it's a false prophecy. In May, <laughs> in May, there was I was still single. So how is that possible? In, in one month's you time, you're going to get a proposal. No way. Seems unlikely. Yeah, unlikely. So, But in June, when I was preaching in church, I was asked to preach in church. And it was that during that time that my husband, uh, he, he works in IT. Mm. So for months, he's been having this vision when he's working. He would see this girl in white dressed in white, preaching in his church, and he knows that that's, that's the wife. And so on that day, I, I preached, and I was the first girl in, to preach in my church. I see. And when that happened, he was reminded of what he had. And we were just friends, uh, you know? And so he, it hit him that this is the one that I've been... Dreaming about. Okay. Not dreaming about, like... like the, we, the we were friends. Yeah. But he never thought of me as a, as a, as a wife material for him. So when he spoke to me about it, and um, uh, that was it, lah. That was it. <laughs> what he, he <laughs> you know, did? He said, that "I know you're gonna be. I, I know you're gonna be my wife." And I said, "Don't we need to talk about feelings?" He said, "No, because if you don't feel the same, that you don't feel that this this is it, right. then there's no point for us to explore feelings." Which I can understand. I mean, people who have been in relationship, you understand that. To invest in a relationship, it takes a lot emotionally. Yeah, yeah, it does. And for people who have experienced failed relationship, you almost never want to start and invest into something unless you're very certain. For yeah. sure. Right? Bro, this, For sure. this guy is such a chat, bro. So, <laughs> so yeah. He's so, quite chat. He's so, quite chat. Yeah, yeah, so we just, we prayed about it. We spoke, I mean, of course, we sought counsel, like church pastors, our good our friends. Then we, we said, okay, you know, I, I, I said yes. And that was in June. So, wow. so, so I, I said, when are you going to propose? He said, no, I already proposed to you when I told you I think you're going to be my wife. La. Do you feel the same? Do you consider, will you consider it? And so you must remember for our family at that time to see this happen when we have never dated. Right. It's it was already shocking. a shock to my, my parents. Uh, yeah. But un uh, surprisingly, <laughs> both our parents, mixed marriage, yeah, they're able to accept each other and... We, we planned our wedding in January. So by the time we got married, people always ask me, how did your parents react to you wanting to run for election? To me, that was not the shock. The shock the, was the marriage. They already had a shock <laughs> in January. <laughs> and, and so to, to a lot of people, you know, if, if joining politics is a big, big decision. But personally for me, that personal change happened when I had to marry, right? right. And for my right. husband also. So that was a big decision for us. And... By the time we came to March, this is another one of those adjustments we had to make. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's like that. And I, I'm very thankful actually for that experience because if I had maybe two years to think about, you know, about Consider. the cost I have to pay, in, you know, being in politics and sure. that, maybe I would have... Said no. Said no. So wow. that there is definitely blessing in that 
spontaneous moment when I'm made to decide. So basically, your parents not shocked really lah. They're like, I mean, I've seen it almost everything at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is that is incredible, actually. One of the most unique story I've heard. Your husband, a chat, didn't even <laughs> go dating. No, like, will you be my girlfriend? Like, no, my wife. No, you my wife, right there. <laughs> Then bam, that's it. Yeah. Oh, question. Question. Game, man. Question, Hannah. So <laughs> this this story sort of uh, the the prerequisite to this is that you know the two of you must believe in destiny. Yeah. Of some sort, right? Yep. That's a predefined fate. Agree. So to speak, right? Yep. So I'm sorry to go on a more philosophical yes, tangent, yes. right? <laughs> yes. Does that take away from this concept of individualism and free will in general? No, definitely not. I think for us Christians, the entire belief. I mean, the Bible starts with the first chapter, mm. God making man, creation, yeah. and then God placing them in the garden and God giving them free will. Right. Right? Do not eat from this tree. Okay. Yeah. Right? Giving you the choice. Yeah, sure. And, and so the entire belief, uh, I mean, our faith is, is on free will. You have the choice. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's why he says, I, I so love the world. That I gave you my son, and if whosoever believes, so you have a choice not to believe, you know. Mm. I see. Right. So okay, okay. Be, be, because of that, I think we have to treat that decision um, making process yeah. with a lot of responsibility. That means I I am free to choose whatever I want. I'm free to marry whoever I want. Yeah. Right. But we need to be responsible enough to live with the consequences. So you are free to marry. You are free to divorce. But Fair there enough. are consequences to your your choices. And unfortunately, in today's world, sometimes we are not the only people who pay for the price for bad decisions. Right. Our children will have to yeah. pay for it. Yeah. So I, I'm not condemning divorce. I feel that some people, if they really feel like I've tried everything and mm -hmm. I need to walk away, that their is decision. their decision that I respect that free will. Yeah. I, I, I just uh, feel sad for people who do this lightly. Mm. I understand. Yeah. Walk in and walk out lightly, <laughs> and and not knowing that there are consequences on the children. Yeah, yeah, right. Man, yeah, some heavy. And I know talking about that, right? <laughs> so on woman empowerment within Malaysia, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to another question. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that swing, that swing, that swing, okay. bro. Okay, oh, okay. About woman empowerment within Malaysia and on gender <laughs> equality yep. in general. Right? Yep. What are some of the key challenges that our country, personally, in yourself, country is facing? And what is the road towards gender equality? No? Sorry to interrupt you guys midway through the podcast. I hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank you guys who have been paying patronage to the Patreon page. If you guys want to support us, do click on the link. Actually, it's not clickable, but you have to copy and then paste because I don't know why YouTube is being such a page. But you can check out the description to help improve this podcast to make it better every time. So thank you so much, guys, whoever who has paid patronage. Um, if you guys have guests who you want to see on the podcast, let us know by DMing us on Instagram or you can just reach out to any one of us and we will see how we can work out a collaboration. This podcast is also brought to you by Fetch Malaysia, healthy, local and convenient. If you guys want to have a discount promo code, check out F-E-T-C-H-M-Y and... Uh, Check out your local pet food with uh, Fetch Malaysia. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the podcast. Love you long time. Peace. This The problem with this country is oh. we, we want to be a first world nation mm -hmm. but we're not willing to pay the price to be a first world nation. Yeah. Let me tell you this. A developed nation will ensure that our women have Sufficient maternity leave. Yeah. Fathers, young fathers have Paternal. paternity leave. Yes. But today, the uh, the the um the unfortunate the debate truth, yes. the debate is not whether mm. uh how many days we should be giving them who should be paying for them is mm. why should we give yeah. why 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 do you need it or you know if I give this then they're going to abuse it they're going to have many many children so we cannot <laughs> have this kind of mindset if we want to be a first world nation. Yeah. Yeah, so we, well, I understand that we have challenges, but I feel that if we are committed to this, then everybody must pay the price, including employers, you know, including uh, employees to not abuse something like that yes. and for the employees not to take advantage mm. of this. So it has to start with this give and take and also paying, you know, like minimum wage. 
Yeah. That kind of debate until today we're still talking about it. Yes. Yeah. Thousand yeah. one, right? Yeah. Uh, no, a lot of you know, so the 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 uh, you have to not look just at the minimum wage, but look at the urban poverty. The, the the standard, you know, three thousand mm. today. If you're earning three thousand in Kuala Lumpur you and you have buy. to raise a family, then you sh- you are in B forty. Yeah. You really you don't have enough because you know we don't have affordable housing. We don't have enough affordable housing in KL. So this these are the conversation I think mm-hmm. that we need to actively discuss the debate the policies uh, for political parties. We need to start talking about that and and move away from racial kind of uh, right, right. policies. We we need to start talking about housing, public transportation. Yeah, um, you know, about livability yeah. It's about livability. I, I feel. I feel everything. It, Always still relates back to race, you know. Like when I talk to a couple of friends, it about should not. It should it not. It should not. But somehow it always go there. You no, know, talking about urban poverty, right? So right now we do have that uh, amazingly tall building being. Oh yeah, yeah man. right. There's going to be a second tallest in the world, right? What's the building called? Is it uh, TRX? Uh, TRX? Bangunan Merdeka? Is it? Huh? What's the name? I don't know. Is it Bangunan Merdeka? That's TRX. It's TRX, right? Well, that sounds right? sounds pretty cool, right? Okay. <laughs> I just want to ask: Is that <laughs> is that building really necessary? I felt like we could use the money spent on the building to be used to the public and to, to the improve people. urban yeah. land. You know, that's that's something. Uh, when I was in the ministry and in Putrajaya, uh. I I fought very hard for uh, an agency for children minimum, at least, or you must have a full fledged ministry for children. Mm. Simply because I feel that. Um, for thirty percent of our population, that that's our asset, no thirty percent children. True. Uh, that's true. Yeah, we don't even have an agency, but we have so many agencies looking at digital yeah. grant. You know, sure. even palm oil, you have like multiple agencies. But how come for, for our population, you have yeah. youth, but you don't have children. children? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as we don't treat this asset, we don't guard it, they are going to be violated, and very quickly they grow up. You know, and they're eighteen and they're nineteen. And we're not spending enough on them. So yeah. you asked me just now why that kind of spending on that kind of big building when basic thing like this, an agency looking after children rights, we don't have. Right. Yeah. And we have to beg for like ten million to set up childcare for for children. Mm. Uh, we don't even have a system to track pedophiles in this country. We yeah. don't have. Oh, I see. Um, and so these are some of the weakness in the system that I discovered when I entered, and I feel such. Unjust, uh, no. It's it's a really a great sense of injustice when children are not taken care of because Correct. they got they, they don't vote. Tomorrow, if the children can vote, you know they will they will they look after. <laughs> we sure. spend more on football in this nation oh, than we so spend sad. on children. That's so sad. And See, the football is still shit. Yep. <laughs> I'm so sorry for cursing on the podcast <laughs> in front of Hannah. But oh, yeah. we spend more in football, uh. <laughs> Of course. Wait. We but spend millions on football. But that is more of a symptom of how little we spend on children yeah. rather than how much yeah, we yeah, spend yeah, on yeah, football, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But also I'm, it's not, I'm not condemning how much we're spending on sports. I'm just saying yeah, that yeah. for 30% of our population, we are not spending enough on them. Right, it's legit right. the future of the country. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I was listening to uh, a statement that you made on the pod, in, on uh, on Ginny Boy's podcast about how like, it's them said how kids, right? I think f- finish UPSI, you don't need to study or something yes, like that, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And it was something about how uh, underage marriage is totally okay. But then at the same time, can you blame them? Because there's no... Correct. Uh, what do you call that? There are no high schools in place in yeah. uh, rural areas for them to go to. So how does that solve the issue? Yeah. In the end, ultimately, by 16, you're probably going to get married because there's no high school in place. Yeah. So I think it's so sad, right? How there are so many things that... The money could have solved, but they focus on another tall skyscraper that is probably going to be really empty. I think KLCC also is quite empty. I was having a conversation with my friend. He said, KLCC, you know, it's damn empty. I'm like, huh? Is it? But isn't it like prime location? But nobody like rents it out. Nobody yeah. stays there. So uh, this is yeah. why I, I feel that there's a need for politicians to unpack, uh, unpack and unwrap some of these reports and make it mm. easily Accessible. understood yeah, yeah. For, for people. Right. Um, if you're looking at Buildings, you know, yeah. you talk about oversupply. There are all these commercial so many, units yeah. everywhere. Like, <sighs> people are buying it just for investment, and then there's no tenants. That's right. It's all empty, and green space is taken up to construct and to build yeah. some of these things. Yep. Uh, and then recently, there's a public accounts committee report, and they look into overdevelopment in Kuala Lumpur and how lands have been taken away, mm. uh, land for utility, and then six la- six pieces of land for retention pond have been used for development. And we wonder why there's flash flood in Kuala yeah. Lumpur. So, you know, things like that, if we, 
unwrap it for people, then people can understand. They feel like, oh, I want to go and read the report. But if you just give the report, nobody's going to want to read it. It's so it's so much to digest. Yes, it's yes. so much. Yeah. Like, and you know how people, like even if you condense it into a sales.com article, yeah. I don't even think people click unless it's like a catchy title. Correct. It's so hard. It's yeah, so, so, so the, the challenge for us politicians now is to, how do I get people who don't care mm. to, to want care. to read and care? Right. Yeah. That is challenging. How? Uh, I education. Uh, I think it's education. Okay, education. Uh, you got to, I remember also it's about the pyramid thing, upside down. You yeah. have to do podcasts like this, you know, <laughs> where you, you, you don't go on a very formal setting. Right. You know, it's a chit chat setting and you don't use politicians. <laughs> to introduce this conversation, you know, it starts from ordinary people like you just wanting to engage the political process and then digest and bring this to your audience. So the, the, the people who were signed up to my posts or my social media accounts are probably people who are interested in politics already. Yeah, right? true, true. But that's people correct. who sign up for Yamcha podcast <laughs> may, may not be. Okay. And that's why we need to come out and engage this kind of different ground. I think sure. conversation is important. Yeah, definitely. We, we, all, we also need politicians like yourself to come over and hey, yeah. to legitimize yeah. us, ma. Yeah. Then, only right. look, yeah. then only we look good, ma. Sure, it starts with me endorsing a very nice logo. Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah. thanks. Logo very nice, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I want to ask. Uh, it's totally not related whatsoever. Why is it so much more harder to put certain or ex politician in jail compared to common folks? Like I can name a few. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't His name rhymes with, he, rhymes with Sajiv. Uh, uh, has an or something like that. But I'm seeing uh, ordinary people who do uh, normal crime getting thrown in jail so much more simpler and the penalty is insane yeah. compared to but people in power. Why are people in power not given or used to be in power not given the same treatment? I feel like that it's, that there are some anger within the society yep. towards this yeah. matter, you know. I want to reverse that. Um, it's Aichi. not because it's not because the justice system is unfair to them mm-hmm. uh, or or give them, giving them special privilege. I feel that it's it's them having access to the legal system because they have money, oh. and the poor who stole Milo mm. not having money for legal representation. Right. And so I, I just read in the news uh, just last week about how a mother who is now being charged for negligently causing the death of the baby. I, I, I read that article. Uh, the child, yeah. and, and she has no legal representation. And so, you know, for, for those people, they don't know where to get justice. They don't know where to get yeah. help. And, and, and these politicians who are charged, they probably have access to the best lawyer. Who, yeah. who, who knows how to who can buy time who, who can knows how drag. to use this section and that section to to apply for this and to apply for that because they can afford it yeah so then what what do the, the 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 folks like like the lady what what can they do yeah so there's something i think uh the bar council and even lawyers who can pro afford bono work. to do pro bono I, I, we yeah. need to bring that access to this legal system to the poor who cannot afford it yeah. guys we need help guys the lawyers watching, we need some help. <laughs> I, I have a question, Hannah. So I, yeah. I think I think in any country, not just ours, uh, we have way too many problems to fix, right? Yep. So much room for improvement. Uh, but only so, so little time in a day. Uh, if you had to narrow down to just one thing uh, that you could fix in your career that can be the sort of highlight thing that you fixed, what would it be? If, you know, if, I'm, if I'm ever given the chance to, to lead... Um, or to change things within my power to do it mm. to, in, with, with one circular, <coughs> if I can get that done, I want to fix the delivery system. S- sorry, I'm, I'm what? Delivery system of our public service, our, our government counters, our government oh, agencies. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I feel that a lot of people are happy to pay tax if only they know that their taxes are not being abused. That's right. Uh, yeah. People are happy to pay compounds and summons mm. if they know that it's going to the right place or if you make the process easy for them. Yeah. Uh, not announcing discounts for oh, summons yeah, and man. then the That's website ridiculous. crashing. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Uh, not not announcing online system, but you know you have to physically turn up at the agency to get a username and password to log in, which defeats the purpose of having an online yeah. system. So I just want things to work, basic things to work. I see. If there's an application, you allow people to do it online. Let it be properly done online and without for people sure. having to get username, password, and they don't even know how to use it. And then you have multiple apps, multiple websites. 
for people because everybody's doing their own ad hoc. Every it's agency so complicated is doing their own. as well, yes. I feel. It's so complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So I can never understand why in this country you can have a my card. I mean, we are very few nations carry around uh, an, an identity, identity card. Yeah. We have a my card with touch and go attached to your my card. Yeah, man. But we don't even allow, you know. You don't even fully utilize it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's true. You know, and <laughs> uh, and and we have, we give so much money to different welfare programs, but all these are not captured because nobody has a comprehensive database. Do you know that today? we do not have a comprehensive database of single mothers in this nation. Wow. wow. So everybody say, I want to give money, right? To they but say, you don't know who to give it to. You don't know. Exactly. There's so much money being poured for welfare, but nobody knows exactly Where who's it? receiving yeah. it and whether or not the same person is receiving multiple aid. That's why there's a lot of wastages. Right. But to do this, you need to consolidate. And that was something Dr. Wan Aziza was working on before yeah. we lost power. I see. To bring together all these agencies, this welfare systems and, and money that we are spending. Every December now, you get back to school programs. Yeah. And sometimes one child can walk away with 10 school bags. Huh? Are you and kidding? It, and, and you know, sometimes when we, when we do program, a lot of people are spending money to make themselves look good, not for the benefit of the child. Yeah. Of course. You know, if you're going to do a school bag, don't put your company logo on the school bag. <laughs> no child wants to go to school knowing that this is a school bag I received as a yeah, donation from right. this company. True. You know, so we need to think more about the dignity of the recipient. How can I really spend our money properly? And so all this needs to be fixed. So if I have the power to fix this, this is the first thing I want to fix to make sure that we're not wasting money, that our basic delivery system actually functions yeah. for people. Like when I go to a government agency, I don't want to take number 1,000 and stand in the queue for three hours or four hours. Right. Yeah. That's true. So I, I, I think I, I would like your thoughts on this, right? What do you think is the, the root of this problem? Because I don't think it is a capabilities issue. Yeah. I think there are many talented people, especially in, your, in more private, pri pri privatized companies who are more than capable of setting, setting all of this up. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've seen it myself, right? So yep. it's not a capabilities issue. Is it a coordination issue where we're just not hiring the right people, we're not paying them enough? Coordination and priority. I feel that if this is the priority of the Prime Minister, this would have been fixed tomorrow. I see. Okay. But because you have different ministers, everybody have their own report card. So you know like when a minister comes forward and say, I want 100 days, everybody come and <coughs> do your report card. So they will then have an exhibition booth in KLCC. <laughs> you know? But it's not translated, yeah. it has not transformed your life, that report card. Exactly. Right? But... You know, if you have a prime minister who will get everybody together and say, forget about your ego, your ego, your ego. You know, just make this work. only one person gets to do this, you know, and not have so many ministers looking yeah. after the same thing. Then it will be fixed. But now everybody wants their own budget. Everybody wants to launch their own blueprint. Right. Mm. right? So you, you, have Roja, you have Roja system. <laughs> system how, how, is, how, how are other countries solving this problem? I, because I assume they should be facing the same challenges we are. This this sort of like every politician has their own agenda. Everyone is their having own system, fragmented their own efforts. Mm. How come other countries, especially first world countries, developed nations don't face these challenges? Or they, do they? They have their priorities right. We don't have our priorities right, unfortunately. Mm. So we spend more time thinking about, you know, like racial issue. I mean, look at the new things that make news. Oh, I mean, this is two weeks talking about Selinda. You know, the, we, we, we are... <laughs> <coughs> fix on things that rile up the people's yeah. anger and all that maybe yeah. I always think it's education I feel if people are more aware they wouldn't they'll be like the media is just trying to corner us then they'll just be like can we just focus and then you will all switch I, I honestly think it's just people just need to know people if they are more educated right and I think if people can read different news outlets and just piece together like okay I understand versus like I'm just going to listen to one news outlet or I'm not going to listen. Then, you, you see, I think it's just education. If people know more, they can avoid all this, like, throw this fake article or this, like, hyped up racial but, but you article. See, you see, the challenge is how do people know more if nobody it's goes and, and brings mm. the message to them? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's why I feel that there is a duty upon us not to just engage in Kuala Lumpur. But throughout... Yeah, but to go to, you know, Correct. Kuala Kangsa, exactly. to go to Sarike, yeah. different places, yeah. So that, yeah. Feels like we have a lot to fix. La. You know, after the Side Sunday podcast, now we're talking to you, it feels like both of these episodes, right, there's so much holes that needs to be fixed and neither of them are getting fixed. In fact, other not holes 
are being created <laughs> so that they can <laughs> More fix holes that are being holes. created. <laughs> you know, it feels that way, you know. Like you just mentioned two weeks on Selendang. I only read on the first day, I like, oh, okay, cool. You know, you're wearing Selendang. What's the issue? Oh, it's a big deal. It could have been something else. Yeah, it could have been something else that you had know, been fixed. Because yeah. right now, the people has the technology. They have their smartphone. The news are out there. Yeah. Why, 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 why Selendang? Why do we have to bring racial? You know, it feels like racial always gets the highlight. Because it makes the news. Uh, uh, makes and, the news. And, and, and other than compared to other relate, related news, you know, talking about that, right? Okay, you see, I just want to talk to you, ask you about the police system. You know, how does police men work? Because I went to court a few few days ago. Can't say who, can't say why. Okay, and I felt that the system in the court, the police court, was very weak. And then the police went to ask me for bribery and stuff like that. So I know. Oh, can I can I say the police name here? Wah, I better don't right. I mean, Wait, you're, asking, you're looking at me. Yeah, I, 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 you're looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is absolutely you should. Reza, okay, this guy's name. I, am I going to die? I don't, I don't know. Okay, but, okay, you see, I went to the court to bail, bail a person out. I had to wait like two hours. Cool, you know? So I went there. So the, the policeman called me, said, you can datang sebelum pukul empat. Oh. Nice. I went there at 3.30. So I paid the bill. I waited for the dude to come out. Like, okay, who I'm, the person I'm bailing. So I, and then suddenly the policeman came and said, oh, this is the Sungai Bulan. I'm like, what, what's up? Why, why did you send him back to the jail? You know? Then he said, you lay what? Then I'm like, no, 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 no. I came at 3.30. Then he said, you datang pukul 3.30. Tapi you bayar pukul 4. Then I'm like, saya bayar pukul 4. Kerana you slow. You know, the, the process of the payment was very slow. Then he's like, Itu, saya tahu, kenapa you datang awal? Then I'm like, bro, you call me at 2 o'clock. I was at Cyber Jaya. I had to drive all the way there, you know? So mana ada masa? You panggil saya lewat. Then you like, you jangan cakap macam ni, bro. You, macam mana you mau settle sekarang? Yeah, like, wow, that's how he said it. Macam mana? Yeah, like, you're not getting my money, bro. I didn't say that. Like, I was like, tapa, I tunggu, you know? So then I had to wait. So after that wait, I went to the counter. The counter, a very nice lady, by the way. She said, bro, you just have to face this. But what you can do right now is you take this form, you come to the court, go to some makama, lima or something, talk to the judge. Then the judge, was, judge will release him. So I like, okay, I did that. Then the judge, I gave the judge information. The judge said, you can come and pick him up uh, two days from now. I'm like, thank you. So two days from now, I went there. Then the the court, the police say, oh, you punya, dia kena COVID, kena pergi hospital dua minggu. Then I'm like, wait, what? Why, why COVID? Why he has to go to the hospital? Which he never got COVID, by the way. And then he's like, so macam mana you mau buat? Then I'm like, huh? You wow. will go again, you know? Again. So you, I'm like, it's okay, I tunggu do minggu lah. So okay, fine. Then I went there two days ago. Same policeman. Bro, I, they are not working for the people. The system. I feel yeah, they are working, working for themselves. You know, then he's like, so disappointing. he came to me, he keep repeating the same goddamn words. So, macam mana, macam ni, macam ni. I just listen, listen, listen. Then I say, saya cuba buat semua. And he asked Brapper, he, he still asks for money, you know, you know. And I I feel like this is an ongoing thing in the police. I feel like the police is not working for the people. The people yeah. and everybody have their own agenda. And also that the system in the Makama is so flawed that people have to wait. It's not very helpful. Why? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh? Yeah. How, do we I mean like when 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 you guys are in Pakatan Harapan and in plan, right? Were there any plans to actually improve the police task force and stuff like this or, or maybe the system? Yeah. When when we got back to Putrajaya, uh Toon wanted a cleaner delivery system. Mm. And I remember, you know, how civil servants were made to change how they sign off letter mm. from Saya Yang. Sorry, Hannah, yang, do you mind speaking nearer to the mic? Saya Yang um, menurut perintah to Saya Yang melaksanakan amana, okay. you know. And uh, every ceremony, you have to sing a Malaysia birthday song. <laughs> change. <laughs> sing to, the Malaysia birthday to change, song. To make them change the way they... They think. They that, feel. You know, that we don't tolerate corruption right, and yeah. we want clean system. So I, uh, you ask me why some policemen are like that. I will tell you that the system, the system that is created, every time there is ambiguity, every time there is grey area, it opens up for abuse yep. because people don't know exactly what is needed. They, they don't know. You know. If you know, if we have a flowchart, 
this yeah, is what happens that's true. within these hours you're going to get this this yeah. is this expectations uh. then yeah. people will know people will not be dependent on favors mm. when you do not have a clear system mm-hmm. right as to what to do it, op- it, it opens up creates confusion yeah, yeah. you need favors just so for things to jalan yeah. Yeah. yeah and also for the for the small fishes they think if the big whales get away then surely i'm empowered to do this right so so it has to start i think from both up and down if you want to wipe out corruption uh and i definitely after i spend a lot of time engaging with policemen like i can tell you there are bad policemen and there are very good ones yeah. for sure there are very corrupt ones and there are very clean ones so i i spend time with the clean ones and i try to understand how can we fix this problem you know and and let's look at how we paying our policemen mm. are they getting enough to survive um and what about housing for them how are they being treated right this round covid has exposed housing issues we are not just talking about migrant workers getting covid yes even the police quarters why because they're all put in space like that mm. right and they're all made to work in places like that so if you go yeah. to a local balai you will see that not enough money is being channeled there are yeah. a lot of police stations where the ocs have to fundraise to buy a4 papers what because the they don't have enough money in, in the system wait wait i i know of <laughs> police doing fundraising because or out of their own pocket to buy f- papers cartridges you're telling me the government i'm to- telling you because i i i give allocation to police stations i know These things are not reported. People don't believe that. You mean poli- there, there are no papers? <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked to hear this, man. Do you know that in in police quarters, yeah. right? There is no budget to even cut grass. So who pays for this? The head of the balai from his own allocation, his own pocket money, has to do this. So the 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 system is created in such a way, or it's not fixed for 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 things to function. So if They don't have enough. Now I'm not talking about those who are corrupt and greedy. Okay, okay. We're talking about the clean one. I'm talking about the basic things. Yeah. They have to go and find money to do it. That is terrible. Okay. Oh my lord! No okay. wonder so many roadblocks, so many like, no and then people are in car. Yeah. I, I'm not give, making excuse, but I'm telling you the system is broken. I understand. Uh, and it's not. It, it, we are we are not fixing things like right. that. So policemen should never have to worry about yeah. whether or not they have. Basic printers, cartridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you go to certain places. Eh, hey, kenapa ada lima counter? Only two counters open. Then oh. they tell you the system is down. This one, this one, no. Because no facilities are not maintained. Yes, yes. So there's always allocation to purchase, but no ma- allocation to maintain. To maintain and to yeah. service. That is horrendous to hear. So I am explaining to you why, why things like that happen. There's no willpower to fix grey areas, <laughs> and that's why like. Uh, Like now the lockdown, immigration, my travel pass. There's so many people want to come back for funerals. They don't know what's the system, what's the process. It's so messy. Yeah. How do right. I actually apply uh, for this and that? It's the the system is so complicated. Like we complicate things for people want to do what's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Ayo, it's heavy lah. It's heavy. Yeah. That's why you, when you ask me what's the one thing you want to fix, I want to make things simple. De- fix the delivery system so that people know exactly what to expect. So when I pay tax, this is what I expect. Understand? My God, yeah. I did not know all this. Bro, the the A4 paper one got me lah. I I actually no. couldn't agree with you more, Hannah. I actually went to the police station in Sipak, uh, and I went into the balai. Uh, grass was uncut clearly, <laughs> and the notable thing was I had to walk past the the shared uh, yep. bathroom. Yeah. And it reminded me of all the times in we went for a government school in primary school and secondary school. Yep. It was exactly the same. Yep. Oh was, my lord! The toilet, uh. It was torrential. You could smell it from literally five meters away. Yeah. And it was just dripping water. And you go inside the the, the 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 actual offices. The doors are broken. Things are in shambles. Chairs with three legs. It's yep. it's it's a mess. Yep. So yeah. That's bro, that's our police station, bro. I can't believe the government don't give location to police. I went to the one in Perak. Look quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> just say so absolutely. You, you, you know, okay. it really depends on 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 where and. Different people have to, you know, work within the system to try to fix it. So sure. I have encountered enough good. I have encountered uh, good enough or enough good policemen. Yeah, yeah I've enough encountered good enough yeah. good yeah. policemen to know that they need help. 
see. That is so sad to hear. Sabri, is... help lah, Sabri. Macam mana ni? <laughs> yeah. Oh Maybe I should Lord. report that guy who asked for the raswa. Yeah, I should, man. That is so sad. I think you should because if you do not have people who who will report, then people will continue. Yeah. I'm gonna report like you that, tomorrow, bro. You think you run away? Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna say your name right now, Zaina. That, that's, that's like literally a million Zainals in Yeah, <laughs> that's like saying Joe. <laughs> There's so many. But I got his name, bro. Bro, the way he asks is like so many. No lah, I think it's happened to a lot of Malaysians, and I'm, I'm I believe a lot of people can empathize. Yeah, I'm, I, gonna I, I'm very man. sure, I'm and gonna it makes a lot of sense after you say that. It makes a lot of sense. My dad has always said that. I wanted to be a policeman when I was a kid, fireman, policeman. My dad was like, it's either you live a very sad life because you cannot buy a lot of things, or you just become very corrupt. Then I like, wow, that is so sad. Then that's when I decided I should be a designer. But and that one also I don't want to do. But there are there are many policemen. There are who good. Can, there are good policemen who can sustain a family for sure and raise you know right. yeah their family. It just gets well. tougher though. That's the thing. It just yeah. gets tougher. Yeah. I th- I think even for the policemen, there is a great sense of injustice. Like you know why the top guy can steal, and why can't we? Why are we arrested for something like that? Yeah. Yeah. You know? So so that kind of you know. And they do hard work. They do hard work, man, under hot sun. Different, different state, uh, different treatment. Yeah. Right. Correct. So, hey, you so sad. A for so people unjust. Pun tada lah. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, what's the plan, right, for Pakatan Harapan moving forward as per today? Okay. First of all, I think the opposition needs to be united if we want mm. to take on this government. Um, the scenario today, uh, no party is large enough to function on their own. Everybody is dependent on a coalition. Yep. So you need to really set aside your ego. And learn to work with each other. Um, on our own, we cannot yep. go back. My party alone cannot. Definitely cannot. Right? We have to work with other parties. But when you are working with others, then you have to give and take, lah. Which mm. you know, you cannot always have things your way. So I feel that um, because competition is fierce now, there is it's a very crowded race. Yeah. Uh, people are every election you see multi corner fight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, our job is to give people hope, number one. Number two, to make people feel like my vote can change things and so I will come out to vote. If you look at Malacca and also Sarawak, low t- voters turn out very, very low. That means people feel like my vote is not going to change anything. I don't right. come out. I legit feel that yeah. way. So I legit you, feel that you way. need to help people cross that line to want to come out and, and vote. Yeah. And then help people understand that they have to live with that decision lah of you know whatever the the vote they entails cast. yeah yeah and and then uh, for me I I feel that doesn't matter which government I I want that fierce competition because fierce competition means there will be improvement in policies yes uh, I want that to happen so if you ask me whether or not next election we can go back to Putrajaya I don't think that should be our priority. Our priority should be how can we change the landscape of politics so that it's healthy and people want to come out. So a priority for us now is the anti-defection law. That's why we signed the MOU with the government to say that we want by March next year the anti-defection law to be tabled and passed so that when people come out to vote, they know that they are voting for this party, this person is not going to hop after they win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or after they lose lah. Yeah. So we that that's that's our priority now. I feel that without the anti-defection law, yeah. voters turnout will be low. If voters turnout low, that means they are going to be. I see. Okay. In hey, government again. Right. Yeah, we need that lah. You know, after what happened uh, last yeah. year, I think we need that. It's very important, man. Yeah, but, that's our priority now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need that stuff, man. Because it really, it really got us hard lah. Yeah. And, uh, it was very change. depressing. Yeah, man. It was so depressing. I, f- I felt like it was weeks of me having s- the same conversation over and over again with all my friends. I'm just like, what's the point? What's the point? Yeah. So, so we, we need to send a strong message outside, mm. out, out there to politicians who hope that I don't care how you function, but if you betray my mandate, yep. you hope I will not vote for you again. So we need to finish them off through yeah, the ballot box. Correct. Making sure that they don't survive politically. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. when they know that there's actually no chance I will survive this, nobody will dare to hop. Yeah. And they right. have to fight the fight. Yeah. They have uh, to stay in yeah. the same fight. Yeah. That can't you just change your mind? Correct. Tak over a flip of a coin. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, since we are still in the Pakatan Harapan bandwagon, right? So when you guys were in power, I know we are going back long ago, right? There were so many things that you guys wanted to do. It was lined up. How how can they have been done better? Like I know we started to get get gather some money from the the society. I think we had like 150 million. 
Mm. What was the what was, for what ah? You're talking about Tabung Harapan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To to settle the one MDB debt. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, I contributed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I gave hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was all I could do, lah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there, there was so many things lined up before you guys lost power, lah. Right. So are that things still in pause mode right now, or are we still working towards that? We the the one thing good about the twenty two months, the fact that we have we had access to Putrajaya, we know how things function now. So because we had that information. We become better opposition. Mm. So, for example, today we are de- debating about child marriage. Whatever Rina Harun says in Parliament, I know whether she's lying or she's telling mm. the truth because I've been there. <laughs> mm. So mm. that 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 to me, I feel is invaluable experience. Yeah, yeah, you have empowered the opposition bench with some experience in Putrajaya. So they are no longer just making noise, but they have they they have access to those information. Yeah. Yep. And so. The the check and balance becomes more effective mm. in that sense. Yeah. So you have insider news, you know, because you've been there. They can't fool <laughs> us twice, like you know. But what yeah. do you think? What do you think Pakatan Harapan could have done better during its time? I think we lack coordination, mm. um, and because of that, we uh, some of them like I I won't say everybody. Some some took things for granted. That means uh, oh, we have five power. years. We have five years, Can but they time. didn't know that. In 22 months, it would end. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Who I knew? So public didn't know. So yeah. I, I, I had a question in my mind, but I forgot. John, you ask question. Let me think first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is a bit of a, I wouldn't say controversial. I think it's just a sensitive question of sorts. But you know how Tun M is sometimes considered quite controversial, like what he says, lah. Right. I know he's been a, a a decent leader in the past, but do you think he's done more good or more bad? Throughout the years, I I think um, people wanting to point everything and blame everything on Tun Mahade is not rebuilding this nation constructively. True, true. I feel that harping on somebody who has tried, yep. especially this second round. Uh, of course, he made some mistakes. He trusted wrong people. Uh, that's human. That, that's being human, though. I feel right. Yeah, but I feel that you know, as long as we're still wanting to find a scapegoat or wanting to point the finger oh, yeah, at somebody, true. it's kind of like a blame game, right? Yeah, we're not learning. Gonna, yeah. we're not moving forward. So, if you want to blame Tun Doctor Mahade for failure of uh, taming Muhyiddin and mm. Muhyiddin behaved that way, then you got to apply the same thing to Anwar Ibrahim for Azmin Ali's behavior. Right, true. It, the same thing happened. What to Fair. everybody yeah. also, Correct. yeah. But as long as we are still fighting, the Anwar supporters are blaming Tun. Tun supporters are blaming Anwar. Mm. We're not going to move forward. Yeah. So this is the mistake that opposition supporters are all making. That we are so um, fixated on the blame game rather than the construction, a uh, constructive thing that we can do. Yeah, and, and, and while your opponent is progressing and moving forward, <laughs> you still. are still like, oh, you know, whose fault is it? Ah? How, yeah. how are we go- so, if you ask me what are my views about Tun Dr. Mahade, um, when I was in school, I read a lot about him as the Prime Minister. Uh, I adored him when we were in school. Like I say, I grew up reading The Star, right? And so I, I, I have high regards for all these ministers and I didn't know much about opposition. Then the enlighten, enlightenment came after I joined mm. and then I understood, okay, race-based policies, bureaucracy, uh, a lot of it happened during Tun's time. Yeah. But at the same time, during that time, people, why did he keep winning elections? Why were people, more, why were people happier back then? That's true. Uh, that's true. Right? Despite all that, people felt very, very proud. People felt very. When they motivated. went out, they felt yeah. So yeah. Th- there was he didn't do everything correct, but he also did things, some things right. Yeah, sure. Right, sure. and so at that time, people had a vision. This is how Wawasan twenty twenty is going to be like. Oh man! Like people, <laughs> people grew up knowing what to expect. Yes. They were yeah, all yeah. working towards that. So I think you got to give it to him. That's something credit he did credit very credit well. Is, yeah. When you went overseas, like until today, there are people from different countries saying, "Oh, Mahade, we know your leader." Uh, right. You yeah. don't feel like you don't feel like you know covered in shame in that sense, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Najib, we know your leader. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I think you got to give that to him. For sure. uh, but of course, there are things that he did wrong also. For example, the ISA, the Ops, Ops Lalang, and all that. But I didn't leave 
then or I was not old enough to 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 know all, all that. So I carry with me the burden of my generation that is different from the generation of Anwar or the generation before my, my parents' generation. Right. So every generation has their own struggle and fear. But we must not impose our generation kind of problem onto the next ge- generation. Next generation. So when I'm now 42 and I'm in politics, I don't want to be fixed on what Tun did wrong, sure. what Tun did right. I need to start thinking, my generation now, how can I be responsible to shape the policies that will... Shape the next one. Shape my, my, my daughter's generation. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. is it going to affect their schooling? You know, or, or their, their gender future. empowerment when they mm. are 30, maternity leave for them. So we, we must learn to move on. Mm. You know, as long as we are still here, if I'm 42 and I'm still blaming on Toon for what you did when you were, you know, no I'm, point. I'm not moving on. No point. Let's, yeah. let's move on and now start thinking, who is the prime minister I want for my kids' generation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What policies would yeah. help our kids yeah. versus looking yeah. back? Because no point is well. you can't even change anything anyway, right? Yeah. That's true. Jeez. So Sheraton move has already happened. Let's let's move on. Yeah. We are now dealing with Ismail Sabri, no longer Mujidin. Yeah. You know, how can we now challenge Ismail Sabri and give him a run for his money sure. next election? Right. How can I offer better policies? So that's something we want to talk about. Not yeah. Not looking you know, at the past. Tun, 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 mm, and yeah. you know, Anwar's fault, Tun's fault, Anwar's fault, Tun's fault, and we're never moving on. That's why we are still talking about Tun and Anwar when the other side, they have moved on from Najib. Yeah, man. They have moved on to Ismail Sabri. That's Sabin. true, man. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a fair fair remark. We should be more forward thinking. Just yeah. wait. We are coming for you, bro. If I'm not mistaken, Muda registered already, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, they, they, they have 14 days, 14 days to for, home minister, mm. for home minister to register them. Wait, uh, to, for clarification, people who are watching this and viewing this, it, this is recorded on the 18th of December. So... Yeah. Just a bit of context. Ah, yeah. Right? So they have 14 days to to get uh, registered or something. You need to get I can't remember. I saw what they have to get the approval from uh. the home ministry um to 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 be registered. But they still they tried, but the home ministry didn't want, so they went to court. So the court now ordered the home ministry to do it within 14 days. <laughs> Why the home ministry say no? Uh because today he made some news and he said, Oh, because of the behavior of some Muda leaders, so you know, we want to slow it down. And then people say, oh, if you're looking at behavior of leaders, then Amnu should be deregistered long time ago. Oh, <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> God damn. No, I'm uh, fine. Okay, yeah. okay. God damn. Can nice, you, can nice. You, do you see Muda building a, a momentum with young voters and encouraging more voters in the next election? Uh, I think I think they are definitely making some waves and creating some excitement for the young people. Mm. Uh, but like I said, the challenge is, are you going to create a wave that is big enough? Yeah. Uh, uh, that is applicable across all seats? Or is this just an urban wave? So that's something I think Correct. Sadiq Correct. and his team will have to see how they can work together with the opposition to to make sure that it's not us killing each other and, and writing each other off while the other side is surviving and mm. thriving. Yeah. Muda, bro. I remember my question already. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I remember my question. I final question, Ken? Oh, oh, final, final question. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> final oh, question. Yeah, 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 it's ready. Okay, okay. okay so we'll make sorry. it a quick one, okay? Then I will scrape this question. Okay. I'll go to a more important question. Do you watch anime? No. <sighs> wait, wait, shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Please. <continue. laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was all you wanted to ask? No, there was something else, but since we're running out of time, uh, so Since I, I don't watch anime, then yeah, nothing no, continue. No, no. <laughs> John, go, go, go. I will, I will curse in this podcast. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, 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 guys, sorry. Oh my God. Sorry. Okay, I know you're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, we're very grateful for you, for you to spend your weekend, like even an hour from, from your day is precious, right? Uh, I guess the last thing we usually ask is any last words, any like hopeful words for people who are listening to the podcast? Yeah, I, I just wanted people, as corny as it sounds, don't give up on this nation um, simply because we are defined by the things that we do for this generation. I mean, what we do with our life. We are all in our 30s and 40s. It's not over. Some of you are in your 20s. Mm. There are years ahead of us and there's still opportunity and chance for us to fix it, right? I think we there's there's nowhere else you can go, you know, whether you like it or not, right? This is your birthplace. Mm. You you will die as a Malaysian unless, of course, you you get a citizenship <laughs> elsewhere. Move to Japan. But, you know, that's, that's a, a time will come when you will start thinking, not just for yourself, but for Others. your relatives. Friends. How about your friends and relatives who have no money to migrate? Right. What can you contribute to shape their legacy or their, in their inheritance and your, your nieces, your own children mm. uh, when, when they're here? 
So that that to me, I feel is something I must I must do as long as I can. Yeah, I don't know when this race is going to end for me. I really do not know, but I want to be known as mm-hmm. you know somebody who have Pretty tried. And that I've tried. I have at least tried. Right. Yeah. The fact that a lot of my friends were very happy to hear that you're coming onto the podcast and us having a conversation and us spreading the word. At least people are more educated and people know what's happening. So we do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank we you really for having so much, me. China. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Yeah. We really do appreciate it. Sorry about your enemy question. Don't worry about that. <laughs> please, please do not be <laughs> sorry about that question. <laughs> yeah. Lord, yeah. But thank you so much for coming today. Most welcome. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you.